Well, you were out partying. I studied the chain. I cultivated inner strength. Forgive me, Master, but I'll have to go all out just this once. So, what do we got here? Do I really have to spell it out for you? It's, it's gunchucks. So these little guys are both M9130 Mosin Nagants, aka Nuggets, aka Obrez. Now, before we get any further here, I want to address, these guys came to me pretty rough, like rusted, really beat to hell. Unfortunately, with the way that they came into me, there really wasn't much I could do in the way of saving them, apart from giving them the old chop chop. This one, for example, in particular, the amount of money that I spent fixing this one up on just replacement parts and all the, uh, the bells and whistles, easily I could have just bought a brand new one. Like I said, these ones were a little beyond saving. So try not to get too upset at my uh, handiwork here. Now, are these pistols? No, these are both, unfortunately, registered SBRs with the ATF, both on a Form 1. So that's two, two tax stamps bolted together here. Now, since this is technically one piece now? Could I have gotten away with just one stamp? Maybe, I don't know, but this is two of them. So two SBRs, they do have full stocks as well, but obviously we're not using them right now. Okay, so how do you load these things safely since one of them is always kind of dangling and I only unfortunately have two hands? The answer might surprise you. You don't. Get old Mosin the Gaunt. Now, if you want to load this one, basically you want to go into a nice horse stance since martial arts is our kind of motif of the evening. That way it's right between the legs rather than pointing to either one side and then you'll load the next one. It's completely safe, I guarantee it. So I've gone a little above and beyond the typical Obrez where you just chop it off and call it done. I've welded the front sight back on for accuracy's sake because obviously with a platform like this, that's super important. We're getting about quarter MOA you know, on a bad day, so definitely important. And I did put together these little cooperate, little eedy teeny beedy cleaning rods just for them. Which I think ties the whole thing together. Then you have the shackles and the chain here, which I had to custom fabricate and weld up and uh, get custom fitted. Could have done a little bit better of a job, but for something like this, I think it's more than adequate. All right, so enough talk. I think it's time to shoot these things. I actually rigged these to go off on impact at the muzzle. Let's see how that turns out. So as it turns out, standing this close was uh, not the best idea. Watermelons, uh, they turn into grenades when hit by something like this. And I just got nice shotgun blast to the face and everything else. And uh, probably not gonna do any more of these standing quite that close. Knocked out that other camera. Hopefully the footage is still there, but uh, we're on a backup one now. So let's keep going. So we're going to try this again, only this time uh, it's a little bit further away. Nug chucks! showing you the same thing twice but this shot in particular is just gorgeous from the muzzle flash to the bullet in flight to the watermelon splattering everywhere it's just a really gorgeous shot and i think worthy of the extra appreciation So because I'm a complete glutton for punishment, we have one watermelon left and uh, two obrez. So let's see what happens when we combine everything here. 
<laughs> Incidentally, I've discovered the world's fastest way of eating watermelon. Ah, uh, and there you have it. That wasn't as bad that time. I don't know what went on that first time. It was, a concussion. It, it was, but this was two of them, so the concussion canceled out the other concussion. So that was a bit of an abrupt ending to this one. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't really have anything decent to go out on. I really would have liked to swing these things around a little bit more, but they weigh five pounds a piece, which to put that into perspective, average European long sword weighs about, oh, two to three pounds on average, give or take. So that's quite a bit of heft that's getting tossed around. That coupled with the fact that I am not a big guy for you, and the whole thing was just a really bad idea. So special thanks to Battle Jesus for coming out once again to work the cameras. That is hugely appreciated. I could make it work on my own, but oh man, is it just such a headache. So really grateful for that. And as always, a super huge thank you to everybody subscribed to my Patreon. As you can imagine, this stuff is not cheap. I'm doing what I can to make it happen, but uh, every little bit helps and you are definitely helping. Especially you, Jan. Speaking of which, you guys actually helped to fund a huge part of the KS23 project. I had a bunch of shells commissioned again because the first ones uh, didn't really work out. More on that later. Uh, but I had to have a whole bunch of new ones made and that was not cheap. But once again, you guys were a significant portion of the funding for that, and I think that is just awesome. So if any of you out there watching are considering subscribing to my Patreon, uh, don't. I am god-awful at putting things out there in a reasonable time frame. Uh, it's kind of a mess right now while I have some logistical issues going on. So I would hold off on that, but if you really, really want to, hey, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. Just bear in mind that um, things are a little floaty right now. This whole thing has been super exciting. I've brought one of the oldest uh, firearm memes on the internet to life, and that's just super cool, I think, even if parts of the execution have been a little sloppy. The whole thing has been just really, really stupid, and that is 100% my kind of thing. So thanks for watching. More stuff later.